。昨天三立新闻也独家访问了 CNN， 告诉我们美国的观点。CNN reports that Taiwan's election could change the world, but how? We are happy and honored to invite、uh, CNN International senior correspondent Will Ripley to join our interview. Welcome, Will. Hi, Alfie. Good to be with you. Thank you. Thank you. So let's get started. My first question will go to、uh, Will.、Uh, how does the United States concern about this Taiwan's election?、Will? I think the United States is watching this very closely, as is China, as you know.、Uh, there's a lot at stake,、um, and I think one of the things that the United States is going to be watching closely for is how does Beijing respond to the outcome of the election. We know that they openly loathe the DPP ticket, the fact that the former U.S. envoy, who they have vilified, along with the presidential candidate. Himself、uh, for their pro-Taiwan independence stance in the past, even though that stance has been moderated as of late,、uh, there could potentially be、uh, more. Tensions across the Taiwan Strait—that's certainly something that the United States doesn't want to see. They want to see peace and stability, as does Taiwan. But of course, the X factor here, the big unanswered question, is what is Beijing going to do to make their、uh, feelings known after the outcome of this election, however it shakes out in the end. Okay, so well, as mentioned, Taiwan's importance is not just itself, but the role it plays in geopolitics. So, well,、uh, in your observation, do you see any oncoming changes among the relationships、uh, among the、uh, United States, China, and Taiwan after the election? Well, well, certainly, Taiwan is probably the biggest source of tension right now between the United States and China. And yes, there's a lot at stake at this election, and there are a lot of things that could change、uh, depending. On the outcome of the election and the policies of、uh, the new government、uh, during the next four years of the presidential term here in Taiwan, if the United States relationship is recalibrated, which is what the KMT wants to do,、uh, that could certainly mean adjustments. The United States has a lot of priorities when it comes to Taiwan. Obviously, the geo. Political significance of Taiwan、uh, is on multiple fronts. Its location on the first island chain uh, crucial, uh, not only from the Chinese perspective but also from the United States perspective, because Taiwan essentially、uh, is、uh, an ally and a buffer essentially between mainland China and the west coast of the United States, along with the Hawaiian Islands. Then you have, of course, the issue of semiconductors, those crucial chips that power all of our tech around the world. Most of them made right here in Taiwan by the very hardworking folks at TSMC、uh, and other. Uh, really important tech companies to the global supply chain. The United States certainly doesn't want to see any disruption to that global supply chain.、Uh, so that's certainly、uh, something that they're going to be looking at very closely as well. And then you have the,、uh, the the issue of the fact that Taiwan is a democracy. You had, in fact, some bi- bipartisan group of U.S. senators, both Republicans and Democrats, in a very rare unified uh, stance, uh, putting out a statement just in the last day or so,、uh, commending Taiwan for its vibrant democracy, a democracy that it's. Really extraordinary to think it only started holding、uh, these full presidential elections back in 1996. The United States points to Taiwan as an example of a successful democracy, despite all of the challenges、uh, that democracies are facing around the world from autocracies, autocracies such as China、uh, and, of course, also Russia. Okay, well, since the semiconductor you already mentioned, but not only in Taiwan we have the election, but also in this year the United States you will have your own voting your election. How would you see? In this year, both like not only in Taiwan but also the United States, we have two votings. How will it change the triangular relationship between again the U.S., the China, and Taiwan? Will well, you know, it was during the past eight years of、uh, Tsai Ing-wen's administration that the United States, initially under President Trump and then continued under President Biden,、uh, was selling a tremendous amount, a really unprecedented amount of defensive weapons to Taiwan, billions and billions of dollars in weapons. The kind Of weapon sales that had not been seen up until that point, and that was a Republican president, President Trump, that initially started that process, and then President Biden did not reverse that policy. In fact, he picked up on President Trump's China and Taiwan policy and continued to advance it forward, and that's where we are today. So I think that、uh, certainly from the Taiwanese government officials that I've spoken to, including the outgoing Foreign Minister Joseph Wu, they're not particularly concerned. They say about whether it's Democrats or Republicans that control the U.S. White House, because in the end, both parties. Have demonstrated、uh, that they show support for Taiwan's democracy, and they want to continue partnering with Taiwan, which, of course, certainly is not something that China wants to hear. Okay, well, thank you so much for providing us the most professional perspective. Thank you again for joining us. Well, thank you, Alfie.